So I've got the Cyclone Roller Coaster by CDX Blocks, uh, over 900 pieces. And it's got some unique pieces, uh, such as these clips for the cross ties and these rounded edge blocks, which allow you to turn different angles. So let's open it up, see what's inside. Okay, some of the first things I noticed is that these pieces seem to be arranged by uh, type as opposed to just being bagged all together. Yeah, this is, uh, each of the indi individual pieces are, are bagged together. So that'll make organizing and building this quicker. And let's take a look at the, the book here. Shows the parts breakout, uh, and very much like Lego, shows how many pieces of what are needed with a graphic and top view there. Oh, and then extra steps, you've got what you've built gets grayed out, and then just the extra pieces that you need to to add are in white. Excellent. So let's let's get building on this. Something I have to mention uh, that's a little bit surprising is the holding power on these bricks is much stronger than I expected. Uh, for example, this entire structure is being held by a single peg um, and it's uh, pretty impressive just how strong the holding power is on this. So I'm, I'm eager to see the, the completed model. Um, that should otherwise be a pretty delicate build. It's only the foot of these bents and these single plates holding it. So uh, I think this is going to be a pretty strong model. I also want to point out these curved pieces here allow for you to attach pieces out of square with each other, which is great for making these turns. That's really clever. Oops. Sorry, let me try to focus. There we go. So that really opens up some possibilities on this. We got the first turnaround finished in just a few minutes. Uh, it's two of us working and it went together pretty quick and held very strongly. Something we noticed during the second turnaround while trying to line up these edges down here is that the difference in length plus the four point connection allows for some play uh, in the turn. So be mindful when you're making your turn to make sure your endpoints line up. But I think that'll be helpful in assembling the final model to give you some adjust overall adjustment at the end of the model. So we've got the second turn, uh, well at least the second turn in the instructions. I think it's going to be the first turn around after the hill. Uh, what I want to point out on these is uh, these really cool little little angled blocks here which allow uh, I don't know if you can see but the track is going to come up and then it's going to bank around this turn thanks to these angles and it looks like we could stack angles on top of angles to create more intense banking that is very cool I've got to pause and show this really clever uh, method uh, for a single line of track you've got these pieces that use a one by six plate to hold the uh, feet of these bents together 
Now, if you have two pieces of track side by side, what they've done here is they've used a two by six plate to keep these completely in line with each other. That is really clever. Uh, I like that method a lot. Just wanted to interrupt and share that for a moment. At this point, we've done the chain. The chain calls for 194 of these little pieces. So make sure to count because they say if there's too many, the train won't engage uh, if this is too, too slack. Um, what I want to talk about is how this, uh, how we threaded the chain was we, whoops, we turned this piece up on end and I threaded the chain down through the opening here, past this gear, let it come all the way down here. And then while I held tension on the chain up here, uh, Justin grabbed the chain and he pulled it up through here around this gear and then held it upside down so we had the two loose ends and uh, pinched the chain together because we were just having a, a tricky time trying to hand thread it through each of these pieces. So I hope that helps. So we've got the structure finished and have all the cross ties on the structure itself. Uh, next we're going to be adding the rail but I want to talk about the train Oh, and also show that this four foot long model could be picked up in one piece without any additional support or base. Uh, this is quite a strong kit. The train, I want to show uh, some interesting features on that. Um, it comes unassembled. Uh, the wheel assemblies are in place and you've got your up, stop and guide wheels and your road wheels. I'm holding the train upside down at the moment. Uh, it has two colors that it comes with. Uh, green was a bonus color that they reached their stretch goal. And then red. I've assembled this train so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, it'll accept a minifigure. And then it's got a little lap bar lap bar that goes over the figure got it. safety first <laughs> but what I want to show you is that the trains can be linked together it's got a ball and socket joint that if you turn the train platform 90 degrees and just give a little bit of pressure it'll come out because it's keyed and it's flat at the end and then you can join it together and extend the length of your train and you could just keep adding on cars and I also wanted to point out that there is a chain dog I'm not sure if you can see that let's see maybe there's something black behind it there's a spike that sticks up on on the bottom of some of these cars your lead car should have one and that is so it could grab the chain when it comes around and then you want your last car to have one and that's the, make sure the last car has the chain dog we've got our rail completely in place and i've loaded on the red train with a couple of mini figures in there uh, one thing i want to talk about when doing the rail is to uh, be w mindful of your profile as you're laying the rail uh, once you snap these in place that is where they're going to stay so make sure you have a gentle curve on your turns if you pull it too tight it is strong enough to pull these pieces out of their clips it's actually strong enough to pull it off of bricks also so make sure you give yourself enough length in your turns uh, when you're snapping them in place and just be patient they are difficult to snap in place but they hold in extremely tight and uh, I'm gonna have Justin pick up one end of the model I'm gonna pick it up just from here he's picking it up from there and as you can see there's no 
sagging, no bending. It's very well put together. And uh, I'm going to let Justin give the first crank of this. If it doesn't make it around, then we have some troubleshooting to do, and there will be more to this video. Uh, make sure your chain is exactly the right number of links. 194. And look at that. That was awesome. Want to do it again? Nice. Also, here, let me move the box. Going up your lift hill, make sure you have the specified cross ties. You want them fairly close together because you don't want your chain to sag too much. If it sags, it will disengage from the car. There is some space here to allow for the train to catch it. But as you can see, because it's not completely in place, it's allowed to skip over. And then once it engages, I, I'm actually turning the crank with the train. And that is the completed Cyclone by Coaster Dynamics.